The most important application of mean field homogenization is with short fiber composites like injection molded fiberglass. Mean field homogenization is used to calibrate these composites with in situ mean field homogenization derived mechanical properties and then to use these properties to recover matrix strains and stresses from macro scale finite element analysis results. In this video, we will calibrate a fiberglass material using tensile test data of dog bone specimens cut in 0, 45, and 90 degree orientations, as shown in this image. Before we do this, we will need to calibrate the epoxy elastic plastic properties from uniaxial test data. We will use the calibrated epoxy properties as initial values in our calibration of the fiberglass composite. Material calibration can be a cumbersome process. It could be executed with an EyeSight SIM flow, but that requires some setup. Fortunately, an automated calibration can be performed with the Material Calibration app in 3D Experience, which we can bring up right here. The first step will be to select the calibration mode. We have a choice of three, analytical, numerical, and finite element based. Analytical mode is the fastest, but currently only works with hyperelastic and hyperfoam material models. It generates closed form solutions. Numerical mode is the next fastest, and it is still pretty fast. It also enables many more material models, including the isotropic exponential plasticity model that we plan to use. Finite element-based mode supports the greatest number of material models, but it also requires the integration of a finite element model with the calibration so that a succession of finite element analyses can be run to optimize the material properties. As such, it is the slowest of the three modes. Here we select numerical mode. Next, we import our stress strain data from a spreadsheet called synthetic epoxy stress strain .xlsx. A simple text file or .csv file containing tabular data would also work. We use the term synthetic to indicate properties that do not come from actual test data, but are representative of those that do. Once we select our file, the contents of the spreadsheet are displayed in the material test data import dialog box. Here we accept the defaults, a name of uniaxial, a domain of time, and a deformation mode of uniaxial. Next, we select the needed rows of test data, which come from a uniaxial test to failure that includes a post-ultimate strength region of negative slope. In this exercise, we are only interested in calibrating elastic and plastic properties and not damage properties, so we will exclude the post-ultimate region. I start by selecting the strain label, then scroll down and select the maximum stress while holding the shift key to select all of the stress strain points up to the ultimate, along with the column labels, and then hit next. Our dialog box is refreshed with a plot of the points that we have imported, and we see that it is monotonic. At this point, we need to select the X and Y axis labels. Happily, they are already set correctly to nominal uniaxial strain and nominal uniaxial stress in megapascals. So we hit next. This displays options to categorize the data by strain rate or temperature or orientation. We just have a single uniaxial test, so we can accept the defaults and select import and then close. 
we can now see a plot of our data points. Now we select the material model icon to display the material model dialog box. Here we expand linear elastic, then elastic plastic metals, and then select elastic plastic and hit OK. We can now see the results of the app's initial attempt to fit the data to the default isotropic Johnson Cook plasticity model. However, we want to use the isotropic exponential model, so we make that change. We get a message telling us that the automatic plotting of response data is deactivated, so we do not get an updated response plot based on our selection of the isotropic exponential plasticity, but that's okay because we can hit okay and then select the automatically update response data icon on the plots tab. So we proceed to define our calibration. First, we set the Poisson ratio to 0.35 and make sure that the toggle next to it is unchecked, ensuring that it will not be a design variable. We leave the elastic modulus E and the plasticity parameters yield stress, Q infinity, and B all checked to make them design variables. At this point, we need to select our optimization parameters. So we hit the optimization controls button to display the optimization controls dialog box where we select a best fit error measure of mean square error and an optimization algorithm of BFGS, short for Broyden Fletcher Goldfarb Shadow, while retaining default values elsewhere. We also confirm that the correct units have been selected for our model, which are millimeters, metric tons, and seconds. We can now hit close, and then on the calibration setup dialog box, hit the execute button. The calibration completes in seconds, after which the plot shows us an excellent fit and the calibration history dialog box appears, showing us that we have reached a very low objective function value of 3.846 times 10 to the minus five. A value of zero would indicate a perfect fit. The calibration setup dialog box now shows us our calibrated epoxy properties. E is 2759.118 megapascals. The yield stress is 39.184 megapascals. Q infinity is 37.463 megapascals. And B is 248.076. We now have the initial matrix properties that we need for the calibration of the composite. No calibration is needed for the fiber properties because they are always linear in practical applications. Our next step will be to import the test data for the 0, 45, and 90 degree composite specimens. But first we want to hide the plot of the epoxy test data to make visualization of the composite test data easier. So we select the settings icon on the plot frame and on the source data tab, we unselect or uncheck plot test and plot response for dataset uniaxial.1 and close the settings dialog box. Now we can select the test data icon and then select the spreadsheet with all of the composite test data. Synthetic 04590 fiberglass stress strain .xlsx and hit open to bring up the material test data import dialog box. Here it is helpful to specify a name of uniaxial underscore zero 
corresponding to the zero degree test data that we will import first. We also specify domain equals time and deformation mode equals uniaxial. The spreadsheet only has a single worksheet named nominal, so we don't need to make a worksheet selection. We see that our spreadsheet has nominal stress versus nominal strain data for zero degrees and 45 degrees and 90 degrees. There's also nominal transverse strain data for the zero degree specimen, but we will not be using it. We begin by selecting the zero degree specimen data. We select the nominal strain header in column one, then scroll to the bottom of column two. And while holding the shift key, select the last row of column two, the stresses, to select all data from columns one and two. Then we hit next. We see a plot of our test data. We need to check that our test data have the correct labels and we see that they do. Uh, the x-axis data is correctly set to nominal uniaxial strain and the y-axis to nominal uniaxial stress in megapascals. So we hit next. We get a panel that again gives us options to categorize the data by strain rate or temperature or orientation. We didn't need any of these selections when we were importing epoxy properties, but now, because we plan to import test data for multiple orientations, we select the Apply Orientation checkbox and specify a zero degree orientation, which is the default, and then hit the Import button. The plot is updated with our new data points. Next, we need to import the 45 degree specimen data. We begin by specifying a name of uniaxial underscore 45 to distinguish this data set from the zero degree specimen. And we retain the same selections as before for domain and deformation mode. We select nominal strain from near the top of column four. Then scroll down and while holding the shift key, select 79.116, the peak stress from row 134 of column five to select all of the, monoton all of the monotonically increasing data set. We can see that the unselected stresses are decreasing and we ignore them because we will not be calibrating damage. Then we hit next. We see a plot of our imported data points and we can confirm that our X and Y axis labels are correctly set to nominal uniaxial strain and nominal uniaxial stress in megapascals respectively. So we hit next. Now we need to specify the orientation. So we select the apply orientation checkbox and define an orientation of 45 degrees. Then we hit import and our plot is updated with the 45 degree data. Finally, we need to import the 90 degree specimen data. We specify a name of uniaxial underscore 90 and retain the same selections as before for domain and deformation mode. We select nominal strain from the top of column six, then scroll down and while holding the shift key, select 59.923, the peak stress from row, 20, from row 127 of column seven to select all of the monotonically increasing data set. Again, we ignore the data corresponding to the decreasing stresses. Then we hit next. We see a plot of our imported data points and we can confirm that our x-axis and y-axis labels are correctly set to nominal uniaxial strain and 
nominal uniaxial stress in megapascals, so we hit next again. Now we need to specify the orientation. 